Henry Hayes. And where are you from? I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. Okay. How did you hear the, uh, about this program? Um, I heard about it through Cherry, who goes to Emory with me. And she obviously knows Sean for a while. And she did the program last year. So she convinced me, and I thought it would be a good idea to try it out this year. Um, I mean, I had heard about like, you know, the living conditions and all that right. and like the food, the kind of having the same thing every day and all that, but I didn't really, you don't really know what that means until you kind of get here and you kind of see it for yourself. So I guess my first impression was like, kind of like, holy cow, I'm like, I'm doing this. Like I've never been to a place like this. I've never been to Asia, first of all, but let alone, you know, a place as, as impoverished as this. And I, it, it was really eye opening. Um, it was really eye-opening, and you, you see it on TV and stuff, but you don't really feel it until you actually get here. Right. So it was totally out of your expectation. Like, you didn't... It was, it was within my... <laughs> it was anticipated, but it wasn't understood, right. I think. Right. of course. Yeah. The food is different, everything is different. Yeah, every, everything's totally different. Right. Um, so, so it was like, you taught fourth grade? Fourth grade. Okay, and uh, what was your favorite activity? Um... Or was... Like a specific game or activity, or like just the general? Um, I don't know. You could elaborate. I really like we we played slap the board, which is when where you write the write a word, write a bunch of words on the chalkboard, and then you'll say the word. Uh, well, Mary said it in Chinese, and then they would try to find it in English, and it was really cute to like watch them all kind of shove each other and go for the words. So I think that was my favorite activity because. I mean, it was pretty informative to be able to translate, you know, English to Chinese. I mean, Chinese to English for them. And also, it was just fun to watch them, like, really engaging with the material and actually having fun with it, hopefully. Mm -hmm. I'd say that was my favorite. And um, what do you think was the biggest challenge for you? For me, the language barrier. I mean, there were a lot of times where... <laughs> There were a lot of times that I wished I could have, you know, like wish I could have stepped in and told them something, like to tell to tell them to go away, stuff like that. And you just you just can't, cause cause of the language barrier. But um, yeah. So that was the biggest challenge, I'd say. But um, once they once they seemed to figure out that I couldn't understand them, it was easier for them to try to communicate with me. I think, which was kind of nice. But yeah. <laughs> it's like the language fair. <laughs> Obvious. <laughs> Obviously. What about like uh, for teaching? What was for teaching? Yeah. Um, just trying to get kids to understand that even though a lot of the material is boring, trying to get them to understand that it, that it is helpful and that it will help them in the long run. And it's really hard to communicate that because I'm sure they've heard it before and you can tell them that all you want, but it's really hard to show that, um, especially obviously when I don't speak the language. But um, just getting them to like really be able to sit down and read something for an extended period of time is, is challenging for any kid. And so it's hard to, to get them to see the, the greater message uh, behind that, I think. What do you think about the, um, the problem of educational inequality? What do I think about the problem of education? Yeah. Um, do, do you think there's a solution? Or? Yeah, I think there's absolutely a solution, but it takes, you know, it takes a lot of awareness and it takes a lot of help from more than we can, it takes more help than we can give here, obviously. It takes government involvement, it takes a lot of organizations like this, and ultimately it just takes um, yeah, it just takes awareness, I guess, and being able to realize that there are people out there who, who don't see the value in education just be, because they can't, not because they're unable, uh, unable to, but because they've never been showed what it means to be educated, and they've never been shown what their potential could be. And they need to be able to see that, I think, before they could ever, you know, even try to reach it. Um, so, do you think, like, for the, uh, for the past few weeks, how have you changed? How have I changed? Um... That could be in any way, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of ways. We want a more sunburn. But, um... Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm humbled, I think. I'm definitely humbled. And it, it's an interesting experience. I've worked with kids before in the States, but... It's an interesting experience to be looked up to before I even did anything for them, just to be looked up to because of where I'm from, because of the, what I look like, 
because I'm not from here, because I'm from a world that they have never seen and a lot of them will never see. So it's humbling to to you know to know to know my privilege and to know that they I, I hold so much power in their eyes even when I haven't really done anything to deserve their respect. Right. And they have taught me definitely as much as I've taught them just to see them able to live in a place like this and to be happy in a place like this and to a lot of them want to learn in a place like this even when you know like you said a lot of teachers don't go to class and stuff like that it's hard but a lot of them stay driven and stay positive and and if I lived here I don't think I could do that and that, that was really yeah. humbling and also I really admire that about these kids right, right. yeah um. Really hard it's hard, yeah. Yeah. Um, just to just to, sh it's it's hard to say, but just to show them that, like, we're a group of kids who have who are well educated, who are relatively privileged, and we enjoy learning, we enjoy reading, we enjoy being taught, no matter how boring it is. I think it's. Uh, even though it's hard to change their life in two weeks, it's helpful for them to see kind of an example of what they could be if they... I mean, a lot of them, you know, are just unable to, but, but something to, to think about in the future. I guess just to give them some sort of hope uh, that someone knows that they can do it, um, given the right circumstances, and that there's, there's someone out there who cares about them and someone to look up to and some, some goal to reach for. Right. No matter how unattainable it may seem at the moment, yeah. Um, what's the best part for two weeks? Um, probably playtime with the kids. I mean, at first they were so shy. Back to that. Back to the board. <laughs> back, back to this. But more like the the recreational stuff, like outside when there's not really any classroom rules. Right. Because you really like at first they were kind of shy with me. Um, you know, I, a lot of them were like scared of my eyes. And then they like slowly started like coming up and like petting my arms, yeah. and it was it was cute. And they would like pull my shirt and stuff. And you see that like people aren't like so different. Like I'm on the other side of the world, and kids aren't like that different here than kids in the states. It's just the circumstances are completely different. But the bottom line is that everyone wants everyone's optimistic. Everyone wants to have fun, and and it was it was good to see. And even though I couldn't understand what the hell they were saying, like. I could kind of feel it, I think, as corny as that sounds. Like, I think they could kind of understand me. I could kind of understand them in that sense. And that sense, it, you know, it extended beyond the language barrier. And it became more like of a genuine, I don't know, cultural exchange or just like a happy interaction, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So, like, if you can one word to describe these two weeks, how uh, would it be? One word. Um... I'm going to go back to humbling, I think. Yeah. yeah. That's a good word. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wait, what word? Humbling. humbling. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. It's not good. So, if you were to come back next year, mm -hmm. uh, what would you do differently? Um, or uh, would you take a different approach? Or? I think I would. Um, it obviously depends on where we go, but, you know, this was my first time teaching. Of course. And I think a lot of the time... You want, you know, you want to be friends with them, you want to be friendly to them, but then that runs the risk of having them be too comfortable and having them start to fool around and expect you to join in. Like, like I would, like, make face, like, the first day I would, like, make faces at them during class if they made a face at me, and I realized, like, even though I am still a kid and even though I am here to be their friend, like, in the classroom setting, you do have to be somewhat of an authoritative figure. Right. And you do have to have, you do have to assert power in order so that they will, you know, listen to you and know that you're serious about it and not just like here to play around with them. Um, so I would probably be, not meaner, but but I guess just like assert some sort of authority earlier before I do the fun part, you know? Just so they see me as more of a teacher figure than a uh, playmate at first, I think. Definitely. Um, okay, lastly, uh, do you have any suggestions for the summer program? Or? Um, I mean, it's a young program and it's not that big yet. So there's a lot in terms of organization that can be done. Like just for example, like I was thinking about we I, I never really figured out one unified goal that we have here. Like obviously we're here to give the kids hope, to teach them as much as we can while we're here. But but 
across the grades, I never thought that there was like one goal that every class was striving for. Right. And that made it hard in my mind to kind of create a curriculum, like kind of something that I wanted them, right. that they couldn't do at first, that they could do after. I didn't really have any chance to think of something like that. Yeah. And, um, and I mean, they learned vocab, they learned some pronunciation stuff, but, but when we go, I, I'm wondering how long that's going to stay. And I wish that there was, I feel like sometimes we're trying to do too much. And I wish that either if we had more time or more people, that there was one kind of set goal that we could yeah. establish and then get to that before we worry about all the other stuff. Because it takes a while to fix something like this, you know, you can't, yeah, of course. you can't do it in two it's, weeks. It doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. All right. Um, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.